Okay, hello and welcome. I hope everyone's doing well. I'm doing pretty good. Uh, let's continue with Zork Nemesis of Forbidden Lands. <clears throat> Last time, I think we were close to actually finishing the game. We have one more of the elemental metals to find, and I don't think there's that much of the game left after you've achieved that, so... Let's continue. Yes, last time we had gone to this fourth area, the conservatory. Where a lot of musical puzzles and playing on pianos, which sound like electric ones and um, strange Zorkian instruments. And also very nice environments. Uh, what had we done? We had organized the instruments out here. And... I forget what this does. I'm doing puzzles and I'm not really sure why we're doing them. I think generally it's because they open up doors and all that, so... These are all in their right locations. All these odd instruments. And... No, I think we're going to get that again. Yes, yes. Have you learned nothing under my tutelage? The notes are C, D, E, D, G. Their cadence is the harmony of the spheres. I think there's something we have to find around here. Are you with us today, child? Concentrate. C, D, E, B, G. How can you forget the notes? Without the harmony of the spheres. There can be no purity of the soul. Wait, did I miss something here? Hold on. If I go forward, I can't look sideways. Okay. Uh, because... There is this here. And I believe... We have to find a replacement poster for that. That's locked. Um, where do I find a replacement poster for it, though? I think we have to look... Maybe in here? I don't think I missed anything in here. Oh, and from what, and from what I had read, uh, we found a key in the piano here, and the key was used on this lamp on the desk. I think that lamp allowed us to read this book or something. I don't. Uh, that's up. It's up there. I don't think. Hmm. I mean, I think that's on. Oh well. We go. My about this. Nope. Nope. We went upstairs, and upstairs was Sophia's room. Oh, hey. Here we go. Here's a room we weren't in. It's a dorms room. And is there anything around these tables and beds? Over here. Nope, oh, we can look down. Oh, hey. What's this? Uh, dismember 12th, 944. Alexandria, there is something going on with my father. I thought it was something to do with Thadium and his battles with Elrond. Now I suspect it is far more dangerous than that. He says little of his latest invention, only that it involves pure lead. And it is very dangerous. My father would not harm us, but I fear he cannot save us either. You once said you wanted to... Exp 
You wanted to to explore the Empire. Voyage across the Great Sea. Come with me, Lucian. Suspender. Suspender. First. 944. My dear girl, please do not be upset. Madame Sophia wants only the best for you. You will always be my child, my only family. But you must always remember that you are one of those people for whom life has chosen a special destiny. We all believe in your magical talent. Be pure of heart and spirit, and I shall always be your loving father. I suppose that's from, uh... Mel uh Father Mel Melvo? Alexandria. My father wants me to join his army in their fight against the Enchanters Guild and Elrond. It has been... its He's been our nemesis for so long. I feel I know him intimately. Magic, power, and politics. When did they get so complicated and corrupt? My father says he fights in the name of honor and truth. No truth I know of. Medicine, education, law, and religion. They mean nothing to me. My only truth is you and your music. Shit. Hmm. Okay. Is there anything else in there? Don't think so. I think there's just the letters. Okay. Uh, a mirror. Oop, flashback time. I listen to your music with the passion and the brilliance, and I, I know you're not ordinary. Don't you see that? You're brilliant, important, magical. Please, don't throw away that power. I want to make my own mistakes. It's not worth it. Let him wait. Please. Don't leave. Hmm. Okay. Even Sophia was trying to get Alexandria to not uh, leave and marry Lucian. They all really seem to be, uh, all the alchemists really seem to be against the idea. What's this? Oh. <laughs> okay, it's a little violin music box. <laughs> yes, yes, that's great. I want to leave. Okay. <laughs> You must get, you get a bit sick of just violin everywhere. Anyway, what's this? The musings on the power of melody. Alexandria, the path to purification is through the magic of the notes. Love, Sophia. As nature worketh joyously in this matter, so much more joyous manner, so much more joyously, when music is joined with nature. For music prepareth the soul for nature and prepareth the soul for the end of nature. For in the soul are these five notes, and in these five notes wilt thou findeth soul of the world. In the soul of the world is the one soul of all things, Mysterium Magnum, endless question and quest come to rest. So lies the great, uh, something, oh, great work, I can just see that on my other monitor, of our philosophy, the one perfection, more natural than nature, more virtuous than virtue, more pure than purity, the one stone of the five, the quintessin, quint, quint essentia, missing a space there. The way of the wise passes through the twin temples of nature and music in her glory and works. Five notes. In all of music, there are but five notes of consequence. Possesses, possess these five notes, and thou wilt possess the gloria mundi. The darkness of all flesh will flee from thee. Okay, we actually wrote down five notes last time. It was uh, C, D, E, B, G. And what's this? Path to musical perfection. Uh, all dispositions, virtues, and natural motions depend on the activity of the heavens and the harmony of the heavenly spheres. These harmonies link the visible within the with the invisible, causing the superior spiritual essences to descend and converse below with the lower corporal flesh. When this occurs, all of nature grows in turn strangely exalted bearing for one brief moment the stamp of heavenly impression 
in this one moment we do see the elements of the world terra air aqua ignis quicken, quicken with animus with life with being the stellar harmonies the music of the cosmos can be found in the simplest of melody and chord if the order of the notes reflects the true order of the spheres both both fixed and mutable if the true order is made known and the harmony of the spheres is played with a hand both pure and worth the panacea elixir of life and one quintessence will appear and the great work will make itself manifest of make of itself manifest of this greatness there can be no doubt he that has once the flower of the sun the perfect ruby which he calls elixir not only can do that but by the its virtue can confer honor love respect long life give long life yeah, that capital g threw me off give safely safety valor ye and victory to whom he will in eight and twenty days i'll make an old man of four score a child okay uh -huh. alexandra wolf music for the moon uh Okay, it's a poster. Here we go. Playing Johann Sebastian Flathead. Air of... Air on a Groove String. Estuary. 16, 939. Plays in the first performance. Alexandria Wolf. Descent of Yorick into Hell. Alexandria. Concerto for Violin and Robophone. Harmony of the Spheres. Hey, that's the same poster which we saw out in the lobby. Yoink! I'm glad we're, from the sound we actually opened up the binder and took it out that way, not just ripping it out. We have some care. Uh, can we see these uh, drawers on this thing cabinet here? Nope. Okay. I don't think there's anything else here. Let's go back around. We can't go up there. This uh, lounge chair here is in the way. <laughs> can't go around it. We can't open this door either. Okay, let's leave. And go over here. No, wrong thing. There we go. Tonight only. This place suddenly sounds very busy. Hey, tickets! Frigid River Conservatory presents Alexandria Wolf, Harmony of the Spheres. Oracle 15, 941. Location box, box C. No refunds or exchanges. Okay. Wait, what's it say? What's that say down there? No, re no refunds or exchanges. No seating during performance in progress. Oh, okay. I suppose it's just... if it, Once it's on, you can't, you know, get back in. Okay, let's, uh... Let's go. Since the show seems to be on now. In time. Thank you. I did kind of want to go through there. This place sounds extremely busy. There's no one here. Well, let's go to our seat. Uh, that's D. Here we go. Box C. Sit down. And I suppose enjoy the show.
one person there i think that was baby lucian hard to tell from a distance and with the low resolution anyway okay that was the performance don't think there's anything else in here there's a utility closet I don't think we can go into any of these other rooms cordoned that off so we can't go that way Okay, so this is actually something uh, I haven't written down. Yeah, the audience wants to go home and we have to play the uh, fanfare. I forget what it is. Let's just go check what that is quickly. It was at the end of this record and I think the record start. I hope the record just plays the last part. So let me just see this. Since 732 GUE, the Frobos Philharmonic Orchestra has consisted of nine instrumental... Uh, no, we're going to have to listen to the whole thing. Uh. Uh. Fine. Okay. For expedience purpose, I'm just going to look this up because I know what to do. And I just can't remember the instruments, so hey. Uh, let me just save it and there we go. Yes, yes. And we'll get poor wanderer. Okay. Don't give up. Your goal is close and the rewards are great. Let me have a look. Uh, I wonder if there's a specific order which you're supposed to do these places in. I find them pretty much... Uh, interchangeable, but... Okay. So, it's just here. This doesn't change. So it's the copper keg and Bino. Copper keg. Boat miser and violin. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Don't give up. Your I haven't given up. And the rewards are great. Hey, hurry up! Yes, we yes, yes. Play the fan. They just won't go. No concert is complete without the standard Zokian conclusory fanfare. Yes, okay. So I cannot see this on my monitor. Uh, just a moment. Nope, not at all. Not even if I make it brighter. On my other one I can. Kind of. I don't know how this, how uh, much this is showing up, but there's a bunch of... We're standing at the uh, conductor's... What's it called? Plinth stand, and uh, there's a bunch of empty chairs in front of us. And of course we have to uh, point at the right sections of the uh, of the uh, orchestra, the ghost orchestra, so that they uh, perform the fanfare. So the first one is the popper keg. 
which is the this one? No. I don't have it written down on my thing. Ah. Hold up. Excuse me a moment. There's no time limit on this. <laughs> I just gotta go check the thing. I have it written down, but I don't have a P on my, uh... There. God, why do I have an N there? There we go. Robophone. Yep. W V N M F L. Yep. Okay. Did I like try to write down a P and it came out as an N? Uh. Can't trust myself. Okay. Hey, yes, yes, yes. No concert is complete without the standard Zokian conclusory fanfare. Okay, over here. That's the wrong one. No. Okay, it's up there. And then it is Nambino, which is over here. And it's up here. And then it's here. And then it's here. The lights will go on now. There we go. And our performance was so great, everyone left. And don't forget to donate those Zorknets to the volunteers at the booth. <laughs> Thanks again. Yeah, well. And you can actually see what we were looking at. It was very dark, but... Yeah. Okay. I don't think you can actually see anything amongst all these uh, chairs. No. Oh. Rather grand looking place. I'd like to go to a theater like this. Okay, let's go out the back. Uh, what's over here? Chairs. Weights. Oh dear. Uh. Hmm. I get nervous around those sandbag weights. They just. Uh, most of their purpose is to be dumped on people's heads. Blue shit. I discovered M. Sophia has a secret lab. I heard the five sacred notes and looked in to see her boiling some green crystals. What do you make of it, Alexandria? Just left that note lying around here. Okay. Uh, oh, well, these are the different backdrops? It looks familiar. No, oh, no, the wallpaper looks like something out of Alone in the Dark. <laughs> Farmhouse. That's very surreal looking. Okay. Well, there is something here to take note of. Uh, if we have a look here, you can see there's like a hole over here. And if these uh, backdrops are blocking our passage to go deeper into this place. See? Oh, you can actually see it here. This is the uh, backdrop behind this backdrop. But uh, there's no hole there, so we can't go through. So we're going to have to raise the uh, other backdrops. 
but you don't have holes over on the right side there. Of course, we can't just climb over the boxes and all that. Wait, can we see these? Oh no. Okay. So let's see. There's there. Have to raise that one. That one. That one. Not that one. That one. Not that one. Okay. So let me see. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's the first one. We can't move the main one. You can't just raise them all. <laughs> so second, third, fourth. And I think that should be fine. No. Huh? I was off on counting them. There we go. Weep. Simple enough. I mean... <laughs> oh. The stairs down. Let's have a look and see if there's anything we missed in this place. Barrels. An empty canvas. Nope. Okay. Let's just go downstairs then. And we're in the storage room. Okay, statue of a Buddha. A cow skull? Apparently, two pairs of eyes. An Uncle Sam hat? Mask. A radio. Zork tone. Okay. Don't think about a locket. Oh, well, there's this big swan here. Well, I think we're standing in the swan, yes. Wind this winch, raise the swan up. And, uh, there's this drum here. Way! <laughs> we'll just bust right through that. And now we're in the boiler room. I think if we go out here... Yep. We'll be back out here. Luckily, we opened the doors behind us. So, we're smart. Oh, hey, it's a locket. Oh. No. Oh. Fuzzy butterfingers. No. Oh. Can I do anything with any of that? No. What about this? Hmm. Uh. Why is it struggling so much? And one game. I don't know. I don't think we're going to do anything over there. Way! It's 
swim up here. I remember this being rather spooky as well, because underwater, there's not much you can do about it. Huh. And now we're in a cavern. I really do zoom around an awful lot in this. How did I get here? We just went through a door. There's no door behind me. Yeah. Oh hey, this is looking in the boiler room. Yeah, okay. There we go. I don't think there's anything else in that flooded area. It's a fish crystal. It gave us a disc. Thanks, fishy. Hmm. That's, I'm sure that sounds different than how it used to. Like, okay, I'm going to have a guess here and say that the game was supposed to be using the base MIDI sound font for the uh, tones for these crystals as well as the keyboard. However, because they've changed since the game came out, they don't sound like they used to. I'm sure they didn't sound like that. And I'm pretty sure the piano was supposed to sound like an actual piano, not a uh, keyboard piano. <laughs> Might be why some of the keys weren't working either. Interesting. Because I'm pretty sure these are supposed to sound... ...more crystalline, right? <laughs> I mean, it's not like the sound matters, but... Yoink! We'll take a crystal from there. And... we do anything with this locket? I don't know. Bloink. Bloink. Is it soup yet? No. Let's get another one. And we'll go to the fishy and get another one of those, uh... Discs. Because it's an... It's a, uh... Grade disc dispensing fishy of wonderment ah okay here we go the lab so this is the big soup bowl so there's c d e b and it doesn't list g but these crystals here have different notes on them okay so if we remember the order of the uh notes we had to play So let's see. These three here are these three, I'd say. That means that's E. So over the other side there will be C, D, and then B is the one back here next to the fish. I'm pretty sure this is nothing. Maybe it is. Hang on. That, that one there might be the fish then. Okay, well, uh... Let's go tap these in the right order. C, E. Because I'm pretty sure they're supposed to sustain the note. E, B, and then G. Uh, which is that one. They're supposed to be going like me in the background. Yes. It's like once you tap them, they stay vibrating. But we have to find uh, G as well.
What did I say? Something over there. <laughs> hmm. See? When they're not blurred, they're not uh, sustaining the note. Oh. Yeah, okay. I think I know what you need to do. Uh, this is like... Oh, jeez. I think we actually read what this is. I think it's like sodium something or other. And it's used... We have to like grow a crystal here. Um, but I think we need to apply heat. So let's go fiddle around out here again. This is what the locket's for. Because it's not staying down on its own, so we have to weigh it down using the uh, locket. There we go. Now this is heated up. We can chuck this in there. We can chuck... Uh, a crystal in there. I failed. Which I forgot to get. Yes, even though we've chucked like... Two, two of each inside already. And behold, it's soup. And this crystal just happens to be the note G. Uh. They're, these all reset. Okay. So let's see, it's C, D, E, B, and then G. No? Hold on. I'm doing that right, I'm pretty sure. These stars are like where you're standing, I'm pretty sure. So they have a point of reference. This one? Hello, I should be able to click on that. Hmm. I can't get that again. I'm wondering whether I have to hit it with a tuning fork or something. Ah, there we go. Okay, let's, uh... Do this again. Yeah, that one stopped.
There we go. Over here. C, D, E, B, and then we go back over to here and G. It should kind of be sounding like that rather, but. <laughs> oh well. I think I actually did figure out years ago how to do this whole section. You've done it. You freed us from the dark hold of the nemesis. The battle of knowledge is all but won. Because of you, we now possess the elixir of life. You must drink it, but drink it quickly or we will all perish. In a few seconds, it will ferment into the rankest poison. Hurry. Drink it. Please drink. No. Please drink. Drink. Hmm. Did I say? Uh, drink, please. Sure, sounds like a good idea. Is the idiot dead yet? Not quite. You make such an attractive flathead. <laughs> yeah, well, hmm. Oh, I didn't save. Oh, well, we know what to do, so. I was thinking about that, that we should probably save at some point, but. Yeah, they're not our bodies. Who would have thought? It wasn't that long. Yeah, that is a bit, a bit suspicious. Why would they be giving us the uh, elixir, which they've... Yeah, wrong thing. Which, um, which I've been trying to get this whole time. Uh... Which ones was it? Uh... Two, three, four... Six. So we just go down here again. But what does that mean? Why would they be... They were asking us so nicely the whole time to find all their elements. It turns out that, well... Yeah... They weren't overly concerned, I don't think, about Alexandria or Lucian the whole time. We're just concerned about getting the uh, Philosopher's Stone. I suspect you could stay down there too long and drown. Not something I'm really too willing to uh, test, but okay. Hey, fishy. Yeah, I'm back again. Yoink. Okay, hop out here. this back in here reminds me in high school we actually did some experiments of growing crystals they weren't no they weren't anywhere near as big as this though but we were growing them on a a piece of string which we had uh, dipped in an appropriate solution and it blew, grew like blue crystals on it. It was pretty cool.
now. Fine, okay, you just have to put the crystal in there for it to grow, and then you have to throw this thingy in there, I forgot. <laughs> Come on, fishy thing. I mean, it looks like a fish to me. Bloop. There we go. Also, I got to save before I click on that thing. Chatter. Okay, can I save? Okay, good. Uh. Betrayal. Oh, geez. I've disconnected. The internet's dropped out. Oh well. I'm gonna keep going. This is gonna be exclusive YouTube stuff then. How unfortunate. Okay, we've seen this. You've done it. Yes, I've done it. Us from the dark hold of the nemesis. Yeah. The battle of knowledge is all but won. Because of you, we now possess the elixir of life. Interesting. This cutscene isn't actually interlaced. In a few seconds, it will ferment into the rankest poison. Hurry. I mean, if they spent so much time trying to get it for themselves, drink, why would they try and give it to us? Nah. Drink, please. Poof. So. You're not as stupid as we thought. I hope you're not going to whine. It's so unattractive. All great quests require sacrifices. Preferably someone else's. Uh -huh. Now Cain and I will be together forever. But first, there's a small matter of an eternity of torture to be returned. Yes, returned with dividends. Shall we summon him? You didn't have an eternity of torture. You only had like a year, I think. Caught in the whirling sphere. We summon you forward. I tried to warn you, but you believed them. Holy fool. May you always be haunted by the face of the one I love. The one you've damned! Oh, shut up, Lucian. Stop babbling. It's your turn now. Try to be a man. First, we complete the ceremony. I'll find the girl's corpse. It's not too late. Redeem yourself. If there's any good in you, don't let them touch Alexandria's body. Go! Are you idiots? It's not her body. It's her spirit inside her that we need. <laughs> it's time to invoke the eclipse. Time for the sun and moon to join. For eternity to open itself up to us. And time for you to go, Pilgrim. Find her body, quickly, before the eclipse is complete. Take this ring. It will guide you. Okay. Yoink. Dun, dun, dun. 
Turns out that Lucio was the nemesis all along. Oh, why? Um, no, yeah, we've actually reconnected. <laughs> Ugh, that was unfortunate. I hope my internet's going to be playing a bit more fairly here on in. Anyway, so yes, they sacrificed Alexandria to get her spirit to be able to create the Philosopher's Stone because they believe that, I don't know, her spirit being pure will allow them to create it. Lucian had fallen in love with Alexandria and wasn't too happy with their decision. And he ended up killing all of them and keeping them there in torment. Why he became the nemesis, I don't exactly know. I don't know if it's actually stated why. I feel like there's a lot of vagaries in this whole story. Possibly things would have been fleshed out a little bit more uh, if they had had more time to flesh out the game a bit more. But uh, anyway, so we have this ring and what we need to do is go to here and use the ring on this. And it opens up. And we go into a crypt. What's this say? Uh, the greatest achievement in science and medicine, in religion and law, give us nothing if we have not love. For our power without love can only bear the fruits of infamy. Love is the... It's difficult to say. Uh, love is the arm and catalyst to open the secret of alchemy only the pure of heart and of soul may hope to enter here and survive okay that was very difficult to read what's this hmm It's a big snake. The big demon. And an elephant. I think. Oh, wait. Can I look at something on the ground here? I don't know what that was. Why did that happen? Hey, look at this. Hello. I'm your alarm clock. Bring, bring. Time to get up? No? Okay. Hey, there's something on it now. Yep. Hey, okay. We have to pick it up with the other ring. It's a pair of rings. Uh... And was this... We have to uh, do something. I don't know what this thing is. It's a mace, I think. Okay, let's put the two rings here. Oh, boing. Dragon breathes on them, melts it, 
We pick up the bowl with the uh, liquid in it. I think we put it here. Elephant cools it. We pick up this lump of metal. Quite a lot, considering it was just two rings. Go over here. We press this. The snake squishes it into an infinity symbol. And then we put it there. And... Give him the mace. He smashes it. And it forms the infinity symbol. Here, have this. What are you doing? No. No. <laughs> Zap. The nightmare is over. We have to get away from here. Wait. Come with us. She's right. <laughs> I mistook you. We have more than destiny to thank. We have you. Stay with us, my fool. My friend. We are the same blood. You have no nemesis here. Well, okay. And they live happily ever after, assumably. And the gate's open. I think, however, we go... Or is it something which we have to do earlier? Hmm. I think if you go back to the uh, little mausoleum there, you can see the credits or something like that. Yeah. The whole place has been blown up because when alchemists die, they explode. Let's leave. That is a lot of gravestones out here. Oh, hey. Maybe this is it, actually. And there we go. That was Zork Nemesis. A hiccup because my internet decided to cog out halfway through. Blah. Oh well. This is a nice game. I like it. It's not really that original of a story, but yeah, you know, I think it does pretty good. Um, I the acting in it I find pretty fine, better than other FMV games I've seen. Although I'm not exactly, I feel a good judge of a. Uh, acting talent. As I said before, as long as they don't flub their lines and put some emotion into it, then I'm pretty much fine with it, I feel. And, and they're not, and without any, like, I think when it comes to acting, the worst thing you can have is hesitance. And to not put feeling into it. And they seem to do that, so, yeah, it's fine by me. Uh, the environments are really nice in this. It could really benefit from having a higher resolution though. So many places which look really nice, but uh, just the small frame, the small resolution really hurts it. Uh, the music is great. Mark, uh, what was it? Mark Morgan? Or something, someone like that? The uh, musician who later did the music for Fallout, Fallout 2. As I found, I think this was the first game he worked on. Some of the soundtracks really, uh, you can hear the, uh, influence, which would, well, you can hear the, uh, it's a lot of similarity between this and the later tracks from, uh, Fallout. 
I also read he apparently did some of the soundtrack for Giant Citizen Kabuto, um, but he was he uh, stopped working on that earlier on, and then I think Jeremy Saul took over. But I think he scored a bunch of it. Yeah. Anything else? No. Puzzles could be a bit more complicated now that I've played through it a few times. I mean, I never finished this when I first got it years and years ago. Um, I don't know whether that was down to the puzzles, me being hesitant because I was scared of dying. That was a big issue for me because I was so used to playing LucasArts games where you couldn't die that the concept of dying in an adventure game became this big deal and uh, put me off playing a lot of other games. You know, dying's bad. I didn't like to have that to happen. Also, just some of the places that this were quite sc scary to me when I was younger. Um, the asylum, the monastery with the uh, Gru underground and um, uh, the demon and all that. And those damn mummies lining the corridor. <laughs> uh, it all looks rather silly now, but yeah. Such as it was. But yeah, most of the puzzles are really just put the things in the thing in the right order, press the switch, and yeah, put, pull the buttons and all that. I feel the game had a lot of books explaining stuff, but you didn't really have much. It's giving all the, uh, all the pieces of artwork, which they featured in this. Um, I feel like a lot of the books in this were explaining stuff, but I didn't have good framing to really understand what they were explaining. <laughs> I'm rather dense. I need things explained in a simple manner if they start getting into areas like this, so, you know. <laughs> uh, having a few more steps along the way to, like, link things together would have been appreciated. Because I knew what I needed to do, I didn't know why I was doing it. Like, the whole Iron Dune creating the uh, metals from there, that was kind of, eh, okay, I know what I need to do, but why exactly this? I'm not sure. Just, it's synthesizing the metal. Okay, how this features into the whole alchemist thing. I suppose the big thing there is that I'm surprised my char the, our character was able to achieve a com complete all of these steps with a supposedly very little training in alchemical processes just by reading a bunch of books and logical deduction. Whereas I think the alchemists took several years <laughs> and they hadn't still hadn't figured it out or something like that i don't i don't know anyway that was zork nemesis the forbidden lands i had actually read a little bit more about the whole zork setting and i think i found that there was quite a few more parallels between the earlier games and zork nemesis which i just didn't recognize because this is the only zork game i've ever played played through to completion um, I did find that apparently the, uh, the name of the explorer who came before us called Bivatar, um, is actually the same name as the main character from the, uh, Zork series of books, of which I have the first, uh, the first in the line, the, uh, Forces of Krill, and apparently, uh, the characters in that are a boy and a girl from our world, and they get into the Zork world, and their name, at least the boy's name is Bill. And then when he goes into the uh, Zork world, it becomes Bivatar. If it's the same person or not, I don't know. If it is, well, they're dead now. Um, <laughs> anything else? Mm. I don't really know. Just a few locations which I think were shared. Flood, flood dam control. Um, three. Uh... A lot of this took place in the Forbidden Lands, which is uh, not, I think, places you don't go in the uh, Zork games. I mean, of course, there's all Zork mids and, uh, and uh, you know, the Great Underground Empire and references to things like that. I did find, I knew this game was a lot more serious than the Zork games, and it still is, but it's really odd reading a lot of the books, and they have quite humorous names in them and um <laughs> and just like 
odd subjects and uh, funny words and it's like you can tell that this is a serious game built on a very non-serious um base it does pretty good for that but it's still kind of dissonant oh and my internet's having issues again i'm dropping frames all over the floor wonderful fantastic um Was I going to say something else? No, not really. I would like to see a recreation of this game. At least not with with high resolution. Yeah. I don't know whether I'd ever go into playing the Mist series. I would like to play through the Mist series. Um, but they're a lot harder. And I remember playing the demos of like, well, Mist 3, I think, and I was never able to make much progress in it. It was just like, match the symbols. And I'm like, what are these symbols? How do I match them? What am I supposed to be doing? I'm completely lost. That might just be demos, not giving enough information. Anyway, I will thank you very much for joining me for this romp through the Zork Nemesis, and I hope you'll join me again next time. People on YouTube, because my internet's dropped out now.